it is it will be very useful the members to uh, who cannot uh, watch live at the present but uh, our my experience uh, in our chance is that even after the session lot of uh, members go to youtube and see the uh, recorded uh, recorded uh, lectures so it is a very useful uh, channel sachin uh, and big congratulations to all of you uh, one more thing i would like to share with the members that when uh, we have started this virtual saras bag study circle this time after break our target was at least 300 members should be joined but so far uh, 100 members uh, are have joined the saras bag study circle so i request all the members uh, please introduce at least one or two new uh, member to saras bag study circle so that we can achieve this target as early as possible with the help of all of you uh, thank you for uh, for you yes sir uh, good morning uh, nakul sir good morning members good morning. myself chartered accountant parak parangpe i welcome nakul arora sir on behalf of starsbag cp study circle uh, nakul arora sir is a chartered accountant by qualification and is a motivational speaker by passion uh, he has given 14 years to stage in different roles he has uh, been speaking on motivational as well as technical sessions of icai as well as any uh, multiple institutions he has been giving lectures on under various categories like soft skills negotiation skills anger management real conversations compliance related uh, like register of companies and msme as well as even given technical sessions on gst income tax excel and office tools so he really has a multifaceted personality and i welcome such a uh, honorable speaker on behalf of charles bag cp study circle to enlighten us on today's topic of income tax form changes over to you sir thank you thank you thank you mr uh, mr sir uh, prak uh, fund ji sir so i have just one question with whoever is uh, technically sound i am not, i'm confusing this uh, webex cisco for the first time so the problem that i'm facing is where do i switch on my camera from my camera uh, does it have a place that i need to you know start so my camera using on a mobile or are you using using it on a laptop laptop on the laptop on the right hand side have... I'm seeing. I think I think that this will work. Like, on the right hand side, uh, just yeah. below your name on the left or the right hand side, there will be two options. One will be audio, and other will be video. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are video. Yeah. We, we are video. Because I I realize I'm uh, locked into the name of Sachin sir, so that's why I was not finding myself with my okay. Thank you. Namaskar. <laughs> Welcome, sir. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Over time. So, uh, hi everyone. Uh, all the participants of the Saras Bag uh, Study Circle. uh we uh, started a little late but i am making to make sure that uh, this session is fruitful for you so we all know that uh, there is a huge deal of changes uh, with the income tax forms that we have received this year there's a major change to the 26 as the annual tax uh, statement which is now the annual information statement this is not just a change of name we'll cover it very soon now the problem is that one thing is that there is a lot of changes to the income tax that was already decided the second big part is that the covid situation is already creating trouble from the accountancy point of view and the important part to know here is that you have to prepare your books of accounts very carefully if you are doing it with 100% accuracy if your books are 100% accurate no worries about that pay attention nahi because apna books if it's 100% accurate what you make then there is no stress everything is easily dealable but whenever you making tiny tiny adjustments or major adjustments we should always be concerned that we are considering the mood of the income tax and the requirement from from the government which is from us or i should say as a professional we have new points that we need to keep in mind while we are conducting the audits internal audits majorly because there is will to make changes and there are things that we need to focus on while the conduct of our audits in the coming days now let's continue 
Let's start with the. Uh, I'm going to share my screen for all of you. I'm sure the participants would be able to unmute themselves uh, if they want to. So, whenever you have a question, just give me one second of a uh, notice and I'll. Uh, we can have you on the All right, I hope my screen is visible to everybody. Um, yes, sir. Thank you. Perfectly all right. Perfectly all right. And uh, if anybody has any comments or questions, they can put it in the chat. We'll have two parts of the session. One, we will be, uh, once we're done with the 26 AS, you can ask me the questions and uh, then we'll move on to ITR session. Now, let's understand 26 AS is the annual tax statement which we used to call. Now it is the annual information statement. Now what has changed? Is it just a change of name? I am sure you all know it's not. There is a huge deal of changes. Uh, when I've studied this, uh, the list of changes that have come, if I say that the old 26 AS is just a 25% of the new 26 AS, that is the major change. That the entire form that we used to study, we used to you know, analyze whenever we used to file the returns, is not more than 25% of the form we are going to analyze these days. One very good to know information, one very important thing you should always be concerned about, without thinking about the competitors which come from a non-qualified background, I believe that because of these changes, and so much more to analyze, so much more to have your eyes on. I think we all need to think about as a group, we need to revise what some are we charging from our clients to give them the services relating to income tax. Because filing of the return, once I tell you about the new 26 years and the things that we have to be concerned about, will not just be clicking a few buttons and you know having it filed. There's a lot that you need to be aware about. So I think uh, we all can go back and think about this. Moving on, uh, now this statement is uh, effective from June 1st, 2020. I'm sure uh, every, uh, most of you would have downloaded one or the other 26 AS, the recent one, and you would have seen that uh, the SFT has already started to reflect, right? Um, and the SFT is basically the specified financial transactions which have mostly started to reflect. Okay, let's tell you what is the addition. 26 AS, old one, we all remember, which made us a TDS, TCS, we used to have uh, the self-assessment tax paid and the advanced tax paid. Only the taxes that have been paid to the government and against the income that TDS or TCS has been deposited. That was all about 26 AS. The, the good thing is that is still the part of the new 26 years. Go ABV is still there. However, now there is an addition. Whereas the first thing, like already advanced tax, self assessment tax, tax paid on assessment are all available, but SFT, which is specified financial transaction, we're expecting your major mutual fund deals and your major share transactions will come under this SFT very soon. So all of you need to go, go back to your clients and prepare them mentally that whenever they do a transaction, what, what was with TDS? Everybody, do we remember the time when TDS came into picture? Many of the laymen think that TDS came in because government gets their tax in a little advance, or government can charge you advance tax, and if you don't pay advance tax, they charge you a huge interest of 1% per month. There's definitely more than this reason. The government uh, wanted to 
put a bar and put a you know put a camera or a site on the income that you are making all the year and that was the reason of the addition of tds not until people got notices that an income reflecting in the 26 as has not been booked by you people started to believe that yes there is more thought behind 26 as than just a tds uh, just uh, collecting the tax in advance so similarly sfts are here to have a check on what all are you doing what activities you have been doing all through the year now moving on details of pending and completed proceedings abhi this was my favorite thing that they've added on the 26 years that when i read this statement i thought that okay finally when a client comes to my office i only have one way to know what is the matter which is behind the file that i've already assumed because you know very simply talking it could change your decision to either have that client or not believe you know, based on the proceedings that are already pending and also maybe some proceedings have completed negatively against it. If you're a new uh, you're a new auditor or you're a new consultant joining the client and he misinforms you that he's already been judged uh, in a different way, there is a judgment or there is an uh, assessment or there has been an appeal which has been responded with an order with treating X item in a certain manner, but he still continues to use his old ways. You would believe it because there is a complication over there, but we all know if once you have been de declined that in one year, the chances are that you realize that no, because of you know, the trouble two, three years, five years down the line, let's treat it the way we were assessed for the previous year. So it's a deal then. then what we do is we trust the client on whatever proceedings he's telling about. But Abhi, what will happen is there are three cases that is that, that the, the client tells you about. You open the portal, you get five completed or pending proceedings. You can ask about the rest of the two. This will not just help you to choose that you want to have the client or not. This will help you to even charge the relevant amount of fee. You know, I would talk a lot about the amount of fee that you charge for the client because, you know, the addition that the government is making on a professional, it is completely difficult to understand that why would we not want more from the service that we're taking. Because this service is getting a little more complicated now. There's a brain that would be invested every year now, not just first year investment and then just find the return on the same format. The chartered accountant's brain is going to be on for smaller returns more often. Why don't we charge the smaller returns as well? I continue to mention that to my entire team of associates. Similarly, I do it with my audience like you guys. So, Moving on, then there is a demand or refund pending on the path. Look, <clears throat> refunds uh, can be pending for a long period, but usually the refunds don't take more than six months to credit. If they do, you have the right to raise your grievances. I also have a video about refunds. I have a you know way that you can go ahead with your grievance. That's someday later. But for now, I want to say majorly demands. Uh, what happens is this used to happen. Um, a few years back, and sometimes this happens in these days as well. Uh, uh, X party has X party cases uh, finalized. X party is a section 144. I hope that same language is used in the no uh, in Mumbai region as well. We use the word X party, but that is section 144 best judgment assessment. The assessment got completed. There was a disagreement. There was no reply to the notice. The owner who is not the person with the amount of education that is required, or he's not the he's not an educated guy, or he's not just uh, if I use a better word, he is the in charge of everything. But still, until he puts it through his accountant or his chartered accountant or his tax advocate, he's not able to decide if the right thing. Now, there's certain kind of notices he decides. Okay, I won't even tell this to my uh, to my CA as well. What is the harm? The CA won't even tell him what will happen. But then, 
there is a demand that continues to be created. There is a complication between the old CA and the new one. And then he moves his file to the new one. The new one would be us, does not know that there is a demand which is pending on the branch for like two or three years until the, the recovery proceedings start. Now the account starts to get attached. We don't realize that there is a pending demand. But here, this will be an extremely beneficial thing to require that we will know what demands are already pending against the past. Now it's, it's about the foreign taxes. We all know that DTAA uh, is with the country uh, double taxation avoidance agreement. However, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> the uh, double taxation avoidance agreement continues. There is two sorts of double taxation avoidance agreement. One, which makes sure that is paid in only one country, not in both the countries. However, there is a huge possibility that we need information about the things that have been done. So there is double taxation avoidance agreements, which is about information sharing agreements as well. I'm not sure if we use the same term for it, just uh, you know, momental, uh, uh, momental confusion, but then there is an agreement with different countries to share the information resources. So now when we share the information, whatever country will tell us that you have paid a foreign tax. Maybe we owe you a credit of a foreign tax paid, or maybe there's an income that we will not charge tax on because you have already paid a tax in a foreign land based on a treaty or a double taxation avoidance agreement. We can decide that this taxation paid in a foreign country will also tell you that uh, there is an amount of foreign income for the person that we are dealing with. And people need to put their antennas up and they need to be serious about things that have been happening. This is entirely what they just are there in 26 years. I would want to open this for questions in the first round. The second part is going to be a little longer and then we'll have more questions. So, but so far, any questions on the 26 Yes, that we have been discussing. Uh, uh, <clears throat> sir, we have kept all attendees on mute. So if anybody has any question, just uh, raise the hand and I can unmute uh, that respective attendee. Absolutely, sir. And, and you can also put it on the chat box. Uh, if you think your question is a little complicated, we'll unmute it there as well. That's also a good way, right, sir? Uh, yeah, I would rather suggest Nakul sir, you can continue and members can put their queries in the chat box and we can take them all queries at the end of the session. Okay, perfectly alright sir, perfectly alright. So you can continue sir. Okay then, okay, move on. Key changes to the IPR form. Now before I talk about the changes that have happened to your IPR, I need to talk about how to choose the right IPR form because I tell you why I'm talking about this. Because there's a lot of change making it uncomfortable for a lesser qualified professional. I'm telling you this is very important. <clears throat> there are two sorts of ITR forms. One is ITR1, which is the hedge. Two is ITR4, which is Subham. These two little kids. It's like Do Bachche, the two kids who have their nicknames, as we call them, with a lot of love and grace. Char Singh was Nehjo Subha Kulate, people have exploited this. People have misused these forms at a very large scale. And that is embarrassing for us. Because not embarrassing for professionals, but yes, for people choosing services or people not even qualified to provide services, or if a qualified person has made these mistakes, Exceptions aside, I mean, sometimes, you know, anybody can make a mistake. The greatest tax professional can make a mistake. But people who are doing this because of ignorance, I think they are completely making the client suffer no reason. ITR 1 and ITR 4 have been misused a lot. And that is why the government has come up with specific policies due to which you would not be able to use ITR 1 or ITR 4. However, because we are 
dealing with an elite audience. I know most of us really know what moments to be selected, but just let me take the privilege of sharing or discussing how to select a form. But there could be questions out of this. I might be able to cover it, I might not be. So if you want, you can put these questions in chat right now because form selection is a very important part. Major mistakes are being made. And trust me, this year we have seen more number of notices on the wrong form selection than ever. And people come to us that we have got this notice and we don't even know what form is used. The passwords have been, uh, you know, the passwords are not shared. It's, unfortunately, that's the unprofessionalism we're talking about. So rather, let's understand what form should be selected and always have a discussion with one or two of your core professionals to, while you're having a confusion, even if a problem as small as selecting the form. Okay, let's move on. ITR1. ITR1, I told you, a little baby running around on the uh, floor of the house. Which is called Sedge. It's a nickname, it has a nickname called Sedge. This is only for salaried resident individual. Okay, again, salaried resident individual. The most questions that I've got in previous webinar is Sir, is there a non resident file ITR1 so long? ITR1 Sedge? No, it's for salaried, it's for resident. It's for individuals, no other person. If there is, uh, if you think, other people of other structures, don't ask me if it's uh, because of its salary. Because if there's only other sources except you can also have ITR1 file for them. But if it's a salary person, resident, I thought it should be an individual. And now the, the uh, bottleneck. The earning should not be more than 50 lakh annually. Now the, the word used here is up to. If it's 50 lakh exact, then can we allow him? Yes, then we can allow him to use an ITR1. There should not be more than one house property. Acre, that's it. So this is for a person who's living a normal life. You're an investor, you're, you're a person who makes more money, who saves, who has a wealth added. Now we don't have wealth tax like, tax like earlier. If you are adding to your wealth like a smart individual, you could not use a simple form. You have to give more details. There has to be more information that the department is looking for. Me. Okay, now moving on. And there could be other sources of income, and agricultural income should not be more than 5,000 rupees. Again, not more than 5,000 rupees. Agricultural kind of income you know, that should not cross 5,000. So the conditions are huge. Number of them is more. Now people say, how can it be like agricultural income uh, is more than 5,000? Usually, everybody today has an agricultural income. If they have agricultural income, it is more than 5,000. In any case, it might be. Unless you are uh, you know, renting out a small uh, estate of the land. No. If you are uh, renting out a good number of properties, it's more than 5,000 a year. However, this is the part that is being added. We'll cover this and change the detail. Uh, any person who's a director or has invested in unlisted institutions can also If you're a director, there is a chance that you have more to declare. There is a chance that you have to declare what things are going on against your company, if there's any pending proceedings or proceedings that are going on against you. So ITR 1 is not the form for you. It is a clear cut indication. By saying simple words, just talk in simple day and word. Idea one is for people to just have a simple salary and live in a simple life, and they don't want trouble. You want to stay away from all the trouble and just uh, get it, uh, you know, pillar to post. They just want to invest in maybe savings, fixed deposits, or gold securities, your savings, and they just want to get their, uh, see their kids grow up and have a have a calm and peaceful life. That's for these people uh, creating a very filmy kind of a scene, but why not? We are very close to Mumbai, so it can be a little filmy when I start talking about the situation here. So, moving on to ITR2. These are for individuals and also for HUFs. We care, let's, uh, HUFs uh, concept, we all know we have HUFs for every uh, client, most of them. So, for individuals and HUFs who do not have an income, 
from profit and gain of business or profit. Okay. We are repeat it's for individuals and in HUFs not having income from profit and gain for business profession. Uh, people, we are already filing these returns. And I thought that you could realize that uh, we call this in a layman term capital labor return. And I have to, whatever it's said in an office place, you say capital gain value return. So, why do we call it capital gain value return? Because usually, earlier when we used to start filing returns, ITR2 was only for people who have capital gain. But now, folks, this is what you need to focus on. I told you, ITR1 was misused. Trust me, uh, I am having audibility issues. Uh, excuse me, uh, am I not audible? Uh, the administration can I get the reports? No, sir, you are audible. Uh, can please check uh, the name is also, I think, of a uh, uh, character or a typical name. Okay. Moving on. For individuals and issuers not having income from PTMT. Now, we used to use it for cap, uh, only for capital gain, but like I told you, ITR1 used to have a lot and lot of misuse. Now, what to do when ITR1 is actually not the right form? People are asking this question, and sorry, ITR2, because there are a it, even at my office, we used to call ITR2 the capital gain master. But no, it is PGVP ke alawa sub wala return. So I think it's a very small statement, but anything as a, you know, except PGVP, you can have an ITR2. Why? If I say it, we ulta bolo agar mo upro wale points to it be like, if a person is not, in, uh, not a resident, if a person is earning like a 51 lakh or a more salary, if a person has two house properties, if a person has 20,000 of an agricultural income, this form, or if he's a director or, uh, you know, in a, uh, or an investor of an unlisted equity share. A big investor of unlisted equity share, but now all these users. So just make sure that uh, you have had a clear revenue. ITRB, we all, we all file this uh, very often for, uh, People who have uh, income from business and fashion. So, yeah, this is a normal ITR3, which is for PGBP and all the rest of the incomes. So, moving on, ITR4, which is also called Sugam. I told you, this is not a Chota baby. This is a very, this is a, like, uh, let's call him a teenager. This is a teenager, but even he is exploited. Remember this when I say this. This is meant for individuals. Allows for insurance and firms, even for firms, partnership firms can use ITR for the access. For individuals, for HUS, and it's also for firms other than LA. Wherever there is a firm of uh, it's a partnership firm, it could be a registered proper partnership firm, still you can use ITR4. But one again, there's another word out which is only for incomes up to 50 lakh. Up to 50 lakh rupees only, like same way in ITR1, ITR4 also, only for an income of 50 lakh. This is only a, this is, this is a leverage return. You see, is, these are the only two returns that you can file over the internet, prepare and submit online options available in these rooms. So, I think you would appreciate that uh, it's only available for a smaller uh, income scale, not for all the people. But then, moving on. The income has to be computed under the section 44 AD, 44 AD, A, about Eight, 8%, 6%, 50%, 40%. So, this is how the ITR4 is filed. Then, it cannot be used for individual who is a director in a company or as a resident unless you 
So they have a special eye on these people. So all your trying to really go after the guys who are not actually directors, they're just the media directors, they're just trying to make the time a little hard for them. Or find details on them if they're making a mistake. You know, there's a lot of times people are directors in six companies and they don't even know how a company is different from an LLP or how a company is different from a partnership firm. Sometimes they don't even know how a company is different from a proprietorship and they're directors in seven to ten companies. That's embarrassing for a professional because whenever they're signing forms of company incorporation, CACS or CMA has to sign the form that is the form that is signed. A person who comes before us and he does not even understand the document he is signing, that is embarrassing for us. But then we can move on, we can think about it, and we can see how we can make this better going forward. So then, if there's any case where ITR form four cannot be selected, in most of the cases, ITR three would be selected, which is for profits and gains of business and protection for individuals and each year. But, over on. ITR five is for persons other than individual HUFs, companies or persons filing ITS and this is usually for trust like other firms, smaller firms, uh, like I told you partnership firm if it is uh, eligible to file SOPA, they file SOPA, otherwise they go for ITR. ITR 6 to open very simply we say company is done. Until yesterday the forms were not out, we are hoping they will become very soon because the company is now have to have their agents and uh, Majorly, the companies which have foreign investment in them, I think most of you are aware that they need their balance sheets and the finalized returns very quickly. <laughs> but we have to wait and watch. Move on to ITR number seven. That is for uh, various kinds of uh, medical institutions. Plus, so ITR seven is a very simple uh, return for Section uh, Eight companies. I think you call them now. All right, ITRV is not actually a return or a form, it's actually uh, an acknowledgement of the the filing. I mean, this year they've changed this as well. This is something which is not a return of but uh, this is a practical observation. <coughs> you remember we used to have, uh, when the loans were given, the gross income was the only concern of the banker or the lender. But now the gross income does not even show on the ITR uh, I, uh, form, ITRV when you download it. You don't see the gross income. I'm sorry, I'm not to black out the uh, form or a uh, dummy form, but it's ready. It's a very less informed form. And the best part, you don't get an ITRV before you uh, acknowledge, uh, before you um, e verify your return. After, only after e verification, you're able to download the ITR5. How many of you have seen the ITR5, the new one? You can reply on the chat, please. You can say, I have. For me, you've seen the new ITRV. Any one of you has seen the new ITRV? Because only then I know you guys are there in the uh, in the meeting. I don't even uh, realize that there are a lot of people out there. Guys, uh, message me. Can anybody tell me that they've seen the new one? They are the Pune Sari Satra has. Anybody else has seen the new ITRV? Mr. Jaitlal has. <coughs> Great guys. Uh, so anybody else can also push in their messages for uh, acknowledging that they've seen the new ITR5. And uh, I don't know if uh, how many of you agree. I, I want to, uh, you know, like uh, text me. I do. But the new one is a less informed format, and that creates a little trouble for uh, you know, to, for a person which is who is trying to uh, use this ITR five for uh, representing his uh, financial solidity, or even for a professional to judge. I think the new ITR five has. Information, very less information than it should be. I think the old information is definitely required from our point of view. But let's hope the, the whatever the government and the Ministry of Law or whosoever, you know, designs these forms, the CPDT or something, is completely correct and they have much better reasons for taking this action. Okay. So now ITFs have to be filed electronically and you can file but not verify, but then you should always choose the verification, which is more convenient. 
manual piling is only only available for super senior citizens which is above the age of 80 okay one now let's do it the changes to the ICR form, the changes to the day-to-day uh, you know, -day form that we are going to use for our input tax return. Major changes are due to the impact of COVID-19, which is, uh, we all know, we still have another month to, another few days to file the return. I'm sorry, the date here shows 30th of June, it's 30th of August now, uh, which we can use the date to file our uh, well, uh, the investments that we have to make for the previous year, we do it till a later date. Now, many of us really thought that uh, we're gonna this is what clients come in and say when they come in front of this side, they ask us these questions that, uh, sir, what if we choose to, you know, make an investment in the month of April, May, June, then we're gonna show it as an investment for the previous year. And again, you the same investment. And you know what the Modi ji said to that, ha ha, very, very fun. Of course, the government will have a mechanism to drag it down. So when you open the new idea, it has a mandatory declaration and a mandate to bifurcate the investment, if any, that you have made between the two. This is not 30th of June, this is 30th of August. I'm sorry, I did not edit it once before I brought it forward. But then, this time window, you are getting on the portal as well. No smartness, no work again. Do not try to play it again next year. So, this has to go in the way that it, is, <clears throat> it was supposed to go. So, even the, the, the good thing is that. Uh, you know, the construction that you had uh, to make as a section 24 to 24 F, which is for investment in uh, assets for saving uh, the capital gains while as it's structured. There uh, we have time limits for making investments, construction, purchases, or rollover benefit. We have time and the high game bonds we can purchase, that's the high value of the bonds. So, for that, you have uh, an extended time. Again, this will also be to be in August. <clears throat> we already discussed this, but again, let's uh, have this one uh, quickly revised, which is taxpayers who have taxable income as a dividend from domestic companies. So, dividend from domestic companies. Maybe we have dividend from a foreign company. There's nothing mentioned, but once you start having dividends from foreign companies, you chance to have a foreign income. So, you have an higher income. So, yeah. But it says only if you have dividend from domestic companies, no ITR one. And we know for individuals if you do not excuse me. We know for individuals if you do not have ITR what, we can get it. Okay. If you have a joint ownership in a house property, you do not file ITR one or even ITR four. Joint owners of houses do not get to file the little baby. They don't get to exploit the little children, the baby and the teenager. And that's a new story, I think it doesn't interest for Creating a new story. ITR one is the new baby, and ITR four is the new teenager. The baby is the story. Who got their uh, righteous security in 2020 by the government? Okay, moving on. Taxpayers need to answer the following questions related to deposits in the current account, foreign travel, and electricity bills in all the ITR forms. This is the most important part of the entire discussion. I'm telling you, if you understand what we are supposed to do with this information, what the decision has been successful for you. The rest of that can be, you know, read down from Google and this UBT can be read down. But what I'm going to tell you now, what I'm going to discuss after this, the next maybe 10, 15 minutes are going to be important and could really put a difference to how you can start your life. Trust me on this. Give me your full attention for the next 10 to 15 minutes, just as this slide completes. And I would really appreciate if you ask questions in this time. Because a piece is an important thing. This will actually put an impact on the way we conduct, the way we, we can, uh, you know, we give consultation to clients, the way we are actually performing 
tax consultancy services. So where we have to accounting consultancy and work with them to be made. That's understood. I mean, it's important. I need attention, but it's so easy that I have an experience in a like this. So first, first question is simple: Have you deposited an amount aggregate of uh, you know, exceeding the aggregate of one CR or more in the current account during the previous year? People are saying is it in one account or multiple accounts? When they use the word aggregate, I think they are making the uh, they are making their point very clear. So please do not go ahead and start doing a little uh, experiment that depositing in a same account or depositing in a different amount, and hoping that. The department chooses to ignore that. Usually, that doesn't matter. Okay. One. Second is this is important. Have you incurred expenditure of an amount or aggregate of an amount exceeding two lakhs for travel to a foreign country for yourself or for any other? Right. Let's expect that you. Are not getting a chance for hiding from the government to the government as a short eye on who is getting on board. Why they have asked if you spend it for another? Usually, companies spend for their uh, employees, companies spend for their managers to go to countries like China, countries like Dubai, Abu Dhabi. And they spend for them to travel across to Mexico, Colombia, the countries which are also in the five blacklisted countries, where the blacklisted by the United Kingdom or the America, America. But then people of there go ahead and try to track these down there. Now they claim expenses of that. They are spending, and please expect that the uh, government is to have a tie up between the CPT and the embassy. Between the visa and the uh, foreign exchange management act needs to whatever they will have an information exchange that who travel to a foreign land and who declare that they have travel to a foreign land. If you declare, if you do not declare that you went to China for let's say a week, but you find it from your embassy papers, from your visa dropouts, and then you decide to tell that your employer was the one who sent to Travel abroad, you need a lot of money to do that. Then you can catch your employer. What do they want to catch the employer for? And what happens is this is very common that a person travels to China, a person travels to Dubai once every month, twice every month, and they don't even save an income that they are making. So this happens, so this is true. Usually the business visit. Should have a direct contribution to the business. Otherwise, the chances are of a tax saving. The chances are of tax avoidance or tax evasion. But there is an income that you're making from that country, but it's coming in different forms, it's coming in forms that you could not declare to the government. You could be a cocaine smuggler, how would anybody know? But if you're traveling a foreign land or you're making People travel to a certain foreign country very often. It is two lakhs will travel to a foreign country. I am not saying one day. In a full year, if you spend more than two lakhs for travels to a foreign country. Now, there is a very common question which comes So, if I live abroad and my dependent parents live in India, I travel them to myself and I travel them back. Should I declare it in my non residence? Yes, you should. Why are you making any motion? If you make that money, you're spending it from your hard earned money, what's the problem with declaring that? We know that the reason is that they are well. The eye of the government, if we can judge, is on people who go on to foreign trips very often. They are doing business in the different countries, but they are hiding from the government. And the best way to catch them is establish a direct relation. Between their foreign travel and the output. As an auditor, you are supposed to ensure that whatever the expense is on the foreign travel, there is a bridging proportion of the benefits derived out of that trip. I'll see you again. The proportion should be continuous or 
the investment in foreign travel and the benefits to life. Why it should be? Of course, that is what we all travel to foreign countries for as a business is. Now, government does understand that they are unsuccessful business people. That's okay. There will be one meeting to do. We have traveled five times to five different countries and still failing every meeting. There's something fishy going on that you can't see. Okay? <clears throat> This for any other person is actually the reason we are so clear and trying to ask the people who travel or make people travel the right purpose. Can I give you one example? I'm not sure what country it is. I'll talk Thailand or Singapore. A lot of my friends used to talk about this when I was in college. That uh, we travel to that country, we buy merchandise. But very, very, uh, let me say they are economical, they're very easy to get, very less costly. But then you bring them to India, they're so First, you save your custom duty by wearing most of the merchandise, by backing them in a way that they're used. But the second way to save from the hassle is. That you also, Hong Kong. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I would definitely love to mention the name of the Yeah, Hong Kong uh, is the country where people travel a lot. Thank you so much for this information. So then, uh, the second thing that happens is they avoid being in contact with you. How? They're traveling for six, seven times. They bring in the merchandise, sell it to their friends and family in cash or to uh, if the you know, Yes, the income is already under siege. You are not able to see this income or get the income tax on this, and it is also a form of public. But yeah, this business is continuing. But if we check this person's passport or we check this person's visa, or this person makes a new return, he has spent two lakhs for, tra for travel to a foreign country. You go five times and again, you spend more than two lakhs. And that's very much clear to most of us. Okay. Another important one, <clears throat> one lakh on the consumption of electricity fuel for people. I told you, if it's not a simple home, only then the bill of electricity could be more than one lakh. In all the states in this country. You see, even if you spend like a few months with a lot of air conditioning, you are going to spend a few months without air conditioning, you are going to spend a few months without features. But again, the eye of the government is not the people who cross the border by This is not a you know LAC or LOC. This is a tax the limit set. So they want to catch people way higher, but they are putting a bottleneck away lower. So one lakh they are putting a bottleneck. No, they don't want to catch only the people who are one lakh. They want to catch people. Here, up the book. So <clears throat> will be very different. You have to do it in a very different way. As an auditor, you have to now start ensuring that your electricity expenses, that your electricity expenses are in a proportion every year, they complement each year. The common mistakes that are being made these days, already, that are seen in Hong Kong qualified, very qualified, very respected professionals are making these mistakes. You're not going to do that. Uh, like every expense, in city Gobi does this person 10 10 percent. Well, that's not how it's done. Or based on electricity, let's adjust the turnover and then electricity and uh, turnover are proportion of your actually. That's the rest of the the units uh, you consumed of electricity for turnover, should that be the mapping? I think so. <clears throat> then you're not really respecting the price change, not respecting the inflation, not respecting anything, but you are expecting that the only thing that really exists is the overall inflation. Just
it is all you know all a Excuse me, guys. I am um, audible and visible. I had a phone call. I had a phone call. I got to silence my phone. Uh, I hope you guys hear. Yeah. So, we need to map the electricity expenses. That's a really important question. Now, let me tell you, the electricity expenses can be directly mapped with the number of units consumed of electricity should be proportional to the number of units produced. Even if the government does not understand it, they will at least you can defend this one very well in an assessment or a scrutiny or an appeal. This is very strong. So this is how it actually happens. How would you actually prove anything else correct except number of units consumed, the number of units produced, and the machine stays? However. Major reasons of uh, this uh, amendment would be that because people are conducting businesses from homes, people are having a uh, mainly like things like digital marketing uh, coming into picture. They have call centers inside the houses, six six laptops working inside a small apartment, and then they're expecting the government is not even expecting tax from them because they're doing it very smart. They're not smart; they're just trying to outsmart the government. Which is wrong. So, majorly, if you have an electricity bill of more than one lakh, most of the bill is in the name of you gotta tell the government that it's going to one lakh for electricity, and then the government has the right to ask you where exactly are you getting this one lakh from, and what exactly are you doing of so much electricity you're consuming. And if you have a passport number, you have to declare it in the ITR as well. That's uh, the changes in the ITR. The, the main important questions which I told you that this is going to change the way you audit, this is going to change the way you enter the information in the books of accounts. This is going to be a welcome step. So always, if you have questions regarding this, please note them down. We are going to have them very soon. And now, some some changes which are just uh, for better. You just need to know them, go through them. Uh, very less to you know, do it. Uh, very less to do in this case. Like in ITR four, which is Sugam. Uh, if the Aadhaar number is provided, the PAN number is uh, actually optional. So in section 44 AD, we all know this is an old one that uh, you can use 6% instead of 8% if it's two banking channels or electronic clearing system. But now they use the word electronic mode, even using the uh, apps like Paytm. You can use the 6% deduction. There should just be an accountable source of income, accountable source of revenue. You will get the benefit of 6% uh, rate instead of 8%. Hopefully, you're using that because when we see it in, uh, in substance, it's really difficult. Because if I think about it, that you have, uh, you know, you're trying to use 8% of 6%. Very really difficult to know or if we. Consider the GST law as well. Now, here's the important part. If I consider the GST law very seriously, then until an income of 20 lakhs, the 8% is just 1 lakh 60. You don't even need to buy it unless you have a I think you understand how they have actually, you know, tightened their claws on you. People who file the funds use ITR law. Without even having that income, I'm not talking about the people who actually have the um, actual turnover below that. The business is actual GST registration has been done. They are actually paying GST. People do not even have a GST registration. They try to claim the business with us. How would they do it now? Just imagine. You have to use 20, 30, 40 percent of an income rate, and suddenly if this is actually actually a business. The day you start auditing them, or the day you start, you know. 
making more turnover, the income would not increase. So either you be prepared. If you have five crore turnover, if you get forty percent as your income, imagine the mayhem. Two crores for tax It's really difficult. Okay. But then again, forty-four eighty for good carriages. Now they have changed the line. This is there are two things here. So how it is? There's either a lacuna in law or a lacuna in the electronic portal. There was a lacuna in this portal. The law was very clear. The number of vehicles should not exceed ten vehicles at any time during the previous year. Previously, there was a ceiling of the maximum row that is removed, and the new validation is what you know, which is more correct as for the law. So just fix to the lacuna that was there in the portal. Moving oh on, uh, this is I would again every meeting, every study circle, every place that I have had the session in, I've asked people that you can enlighten me on this information. I have no idea if this has any significance. It is very significant change that if government employees have filed ITR one, they have to be bifurcated in state, central, and not applicable. I don't know if there's any uh, no. Sir, you have the right reason why this is a significant step. Please push it right now. You can also write me an email about this. Now, okay, this is uh, Mumbai and Bombay. Mumbai, I think, was perfectly true. Now, uh, I can ask the uh, authorities uh, do we have a chawl system in Pune as well? The small chawls that they are there in Mumbai, they have a common reservation space. Do they have it in uh, Pune as well? Yeah, we have in Pune, but uh, the numbers are not as high as Mumbai. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. So, uh, in those uh, kind of residential dwellings, you know, the limits of one lakh eighty thousand and fifty thousand, they don't really make a lot of sense. Uh, they don't really come in too often, or if there's so much crowded and the uh, rent collection process is so uh, complicated that the government cannot push into it. But now, what they're doing is they are making the furnishing of the PAN number and Aadhaar number and data if there is serious deduction. Even if there is serious not deducted, only if you have it available, you have to mention the PAN and Aadhaar details of your tenant. And moving on, the serious is required to be deducted, you have to deduct serious as well. Why is this a welcome step? The number of PAN numbers and Aadhaar numbers you mentioned you can actually put a link there because the person living in Mumbai has a high chance of working on a in an organized sector. He would be claiming constant allowances, and then you would be declaring a certain amount as rent or as an income. Now there will be linkage that the kind of income you are showing is the kind of income that is being booked by the people who are booking money against your name. That is going to be a way to catch smaller fish in the sea. And then idea six uh, has a new option. Again, this is not an option, this is not a change, but uh, this is just enforcement of the law already in picture, section 115 BAA and 115 BAB. I think most of you know that. That uh, section has to, to bring that section into force. They have uh, offered the utility offers a drop down to use the regime of a concessional tax rate. 22%. Okay, move on. ITR 356 details pertaining to SSE's choice of paying additional income tax in case of non repatriation of the primary adjustment within the prescribed limit. Totally a technical issue of uh, non repatriation. Uh, then we can have an additional discussion. A small uh, question can be answered right now. But for details, we need to understand this non repatriation principle. On, we can have a full session of that. But moving on, detail of notices, orders, bill numbers have to be provided by the taxpayers of reply to the notice received in the sections, including the date of such a notice or order. Two dates for filing all the ITRs have been extended until now, the 28th July. There's a funny thing. That the filing of tax order, the date is 30th of, uh, 30th of November. 30th of November is the date for filing of tax order, and in 30th of uh, sorry, let me just have a clear thought. Yeah, 30th of November is the date for filing of returns, and 30th of October is the date of tax audit. 
and that is why this is the first year that uh, individual ITR filing date is ahead of the date of uh, filing the tax order. Surprising? But I think uh, let's assume that we are able to manage the pressure. Because I think the government is taking the easy way out there. They are just extending the due date without acknowledging that the return, initial individual returns can be filed through electronic communication, through emails, through web meetings that they are doing, or you could have started visiting offices, not to have started visiting offices. Why not to provide them with the date of filing of at least individual ITR? Because I think the government is ignoring that there will be a lot of filed up work, these file rooms, these tables will be filled up until the point where we will have a hard time breathing and the due date, single due date, so many ITRs, so many things that used to be in the last year. Already people are coming out of the COVID situation. Uh, people have less staff in their office and they have new staff which will not be equally trained like the old one. That's going to be a little difficult. So I think let's hope for the best out of this lockdown. That was all for today's session. I hope it was a learning experience. And thank you so much for bearing so much of patience with me. However, now it's open for questions or anything about the session you want to talk to me about. This was all for me today about the session. Yes, sir. Over to you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, one query has been posted by Mr. Parag Gupta uh, uh, in the chat box. What he says is, if we are buying any international branded machinery parts from foreign nation, which amounts for more than rupees 2 lakhs, and paying the bills through ATM, and we pay ATM bills, and we pay ATM bill by our company's current account. Are we eligible for claiming tax mortgage? Okay, once again, I'm, I'm sorry. I understand. I think I am trying to make up this transaction here. Uh, please help me out. So what he's saying is, he's saying that first we buy a foreign machinery parts using Paytm. No, 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 sir. Uh, I have just posted that query in the chat box again. Okay. Where it. all members can also be with. ATM bill, yeah. What is an ATM bill? No, ATM bill, what what I mean is what uh, they want to ask is they have uh, gone on an official trip to, let's say, foreign country and they buy some branded machinery parts. While making the payment, they are using their personal ATM card over there. Okay, and they're putting once, they come back, once they come back, their companies are paying the amount from their current account. So in this case, are they eligible to claim, claim tax mortgage? That is what I interpret. Uh, Parajji, this, uh, this is a matter yeah. of law. Uh, more than two lakhs, and then using an ATM and then transferring the money back into the account. This is using a payment mechanism. So if there is a tax mortgage is eligible in a normal circumstance, this particular arrangement of using the personal ATM. And then finally, using it uh, by the company's current account, this arrangement will have no effect on the eligibility to claim the tax mortgage. Now, is it eligible to claim the tax mortgage or not? We have to look into the details of the transaction, and that is extremely uh, specific consultancy. So, yeah, this transaction that you have mentioned, you're going to a foreign land using parts for more than two taxes in ATM, and then paying the ATM, filling it up with the company's current account. This arrangement has no effect on the eligibility of the tax. That's all I can say about this. Okay. Uh, members, either you can put your queries in the chat box or maybe if you look at the members list at the left hand bottom, there is a icon of hand. So either you can raise your hand and I can unmute your the respective member so that you can ask the query directly to the to our speaker today. Uh, Sir, mm -hmm. when people do not ask a lot of questions, no, I have a way, I have a way of, uh, you know, understanding it. Either they have it so clear, 
और इट्स ऑल क्लियर या तो बहुत अच्छा समझ में आया कुछ भी समझ <laughs> no your your presentation was really very good sir and uh, i i think it was uh, pretty proper from your end as well so as to get the proper understanding of the changes that has happened in the form and i think as of now at least uh, members don't have any queries uh, so fine uh, maybe uh, would we'll stop over here uh, thank you very much sir uh, and we claim j so one uh, query has uh, come over here uh, can we claim gst on vehicle purchase yes actually yes. gst ka specific query ho gaya sir but still i have the answer for it so i will answer it uh, gst mein yaar we have a new law uh, if it's uh, up to a 13 seater vehicle you cannot claim a gst input on that but if it's more than a 13 seater vehicle you can claim an input tax of gst however If you will not, uh, if there is any GST that is not eligible for an input, and you are using that vehicle for business, or uh, you can use the um, uh, amount for depreciation instead of you know getting a exact payback of it. Yeah, but input tax credit के लिए the thirteen the thirteen seater से वाला आंसर नहीं चलेगा क्योंकि thirteen seater के ऊपर if the vehicle is uh, able to have a seating of more than thirteen people, it is going to be uh, allowed. Uh, input but otherwise it won't be allowed it's uh, blocked under section 175 i think section 175 h a or something like that okay. yeah uh i i think members don't have uh, any further queries as of now so thank you very much uh, nakul sir many times yeah. which form is to be used is taken for granted so people yeah. tend to use the same form as used in the previous year without going into it details of uh, changes in the form uh, so uh, actually i on behalf of uh, saras bag study circle and all members uh, thank you sir for uh, sparing your valuable time and addressing our members in a very lucid manner i also would like to extend my gratitude to all members for a patient hearing thank you and wish you all a very happy weekend and have a good day thank you hey bye happy weekend everyone thank you sir okay So we end the meeting? Yes, yeah. Thank you. Okay.